Hello everyone, this is Mikeimus, and I have a new project that I'd like to show today. Basically, what it is, A.W. Weaver and I decided to create Walmart. Well, in a way. Essentially, we have a input display here, 10, ten digit uh, input, and what we will do is uh, you will basically uh, put in your input one digit at a time. So in this case, if I want uh, an you know, an item 11, I'd put in 1, enter, and then 1, enter, and then it'll send out the input. And what we have here is those buttons are essentially hooked up to these lines here. And zero's not hooked up to anything because zero is, well, zero, and that's why the enter key exists, is to lodge. log a zero in the case of a zero one. Uh, you know, you would need it to know that you put in a zero. But what we have is you have you know the inputs going out all nine of them. They just go ahead and run to these OR gates. These OR gates take those lines and determine their BCD value. So one would be in BCD zero 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 one, um, and BCD stands for binary code decimal. And so that means that if it's BCD, it it's the binary equivalent from 0 to 9 and no greater. So it's from 0 to 1001 in binary. And it has to be in a 4-digit format for a BCD decoder to understand it. If you were to put a 10, which is a 1010, it wouldn't work with the BCD decoder. And a BCD decoder is used primarily for 7-segment displays um, or anything else that you'd want to use it for. Uh, but you know, essentially those inputs come down and their BCD equivalent is determined. So uh, they come on down here, they hit these R snore latches. Those R snore latches hold the state long enough for the flip flop to read it. And then when you press enter, that enter key comes down this line here, which comes down through here and toggles that R snore latch. So R snore latch will then close out the D flip flops on the bottom, which means this first digit has been logged and it'll switch the state on this flip-flop will then switch state on the next flip-flop right here which will then open up this flip-flop these flip-flops for their input and they're closed right now because I pressed the enter key again um, and this line will be off and, and also when you press the enter key uh, it clears these are snore latches so that they're ready for the next line. But then you put in your second digit, it comes down through here, uh, our snore latches are set, um, then um, it holds the state here when you hit enter, it'll flip this on which will then store the next digit and clear the our snore, uh, snore latches again. And so what we should have here is is um, one and one which is what we have. So we have one coming out through that one and one coming out through that one. Now basically what happens is since this is a lower number it'll go on down through the pipe to the adder. Um, whereas this number here uh, we need to figure out what you know it uh, binary equivalent is when you multiply one times ten. Um, so that's where this multiplier comes in. I created this multiplier myself. It's a uh, ten multiplier. So any binary digit that you put in there uh, from 1 through 9 it'll multiply by 10 so you know uh, 10 20 30 and so on and you know it's basically that's what it does and the way it determines the logic is you take your inputs your BCD inputs and uh, in this case it's a 1 so you have your 1 and then not not and not so in the circumstance of it being uh, off you know 0 0 0 1 uh, then it'll activate this AND gate and send it on. And in the case of a 2, um, it would be um, a circumstance of, uh, you know, not, not, and then uh, not, and then this is actually the second digit right here. Um, it's not really organized in the same way. It looks like it's the same, but it's actually coming from a separate line. As you can see, these are coming from two separate lines. So in this case, this would be um, not 0, so it would be 0, 0, one zero, which is two, and so then it just sends it through, and then uh, you know sends the equivalent in uh, in binary, which would be one zero one zero for ten. I omitted the last digit because when you multiply by ten um, in the one through nine range, 
uh, it always ends in a zero, so it doesn't need to be there. You just shift your bits over one. So in this case, when they go into the adder, uh, I don't have uh, any input on the first digit in the adder because it's always a zero. And so I start with the second digit, which um, is a one. So it's zero, one, zero, one is 10 and plus one, which is uh, 11 or 1011. So then that goes through the adder, comes up through these terminals, and is sent through these lines. Now I have an interrupter, basically a selector. Um, when these are on, these are on when it's ready for you to input. And basically what it means is it, it keeps any information from being sent down this line until a certain amount of time has elapsed. And the reason I do that is because it takes longer for you to um, determine the tens value than it does for you to determine the ones value and not only that but it takes you time to input each digit um, so uh, I need to cal you know calibrate it for that period of time and right now it's on a 20 second timer I believe um, and so basically once that's off it allows the input to go down through the line which is 1011 as you can see so then that'll come down here and you know everything here is timed so that when it finally reaches here the main decoder, the digits, w these digits will go through their lines, their respective lines at the exact same time. So it'll just cascade down here at the exact same time. And this is just the same design I used on the multiplier. Uh, essentially, whenever the the value comes down, it derives the value based on um, you know simple not and um, and repeater language. So in this case, uh, since this is a one. Um, this is the first one. It's uh, in this case. I didn't even worry about finishing the wiring on this uh, because um, it doesn't really, you know, matter. But um, actually, that's probably a mistake in the actual copy. But I'll just finish it up anyway, um, just for continuity. Uh, anyway, so basically, um, in this case, it's a one zero one one, and so that doesn't activate these gates because. Um, it's looking for 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, as you can see here because it will repeat the signal um, and so only if all these are off all these lines are off will this AND gate activate but they're not all off as you can see so we're looking for 11 um, and 11 would be right here this is 11 so what this is saying is um, you know zero zero one zero one one is what it's looking for it's repeating the signal as you can see how all these are on and so it sends the signal on through and then it says I want this cart well this is the number 11 cart as you can see and so you just fill that with item 11 whatever that is I don't know stationary water or something who knows anyway um, and uh, when it does that it act it switches this track and it powers that rail. So it sends the cart out, the cart goes down all the way down the rail to where our summoning station is. Um, and when it goes across this switch right here, it changes the state of our R snore latch down there and switches this track so that it is turned um, in such a way to where it can receive it when it comes back. And when the cart comes back, it'll flip that switch again, which will flip the cart back to its correct direction and uh, this will no longer be on so this will be flipped back to the correct direction and it'll just bounce back and I'll show you when I go over here and clear it there's our cart I hit clear now the cart will go on back we'll follow it and it's really slow but it works um, you know obviously in a game where you can just summon anything you want if you had admin right it's kind of silly but if it's a situation where you want to create kind of a cool thing for non-admin players to be able to get items um, and you control what items they get I think it's a pretty cool idea um, and so does A.W. Weaver who helped me out with a lot of the concepts um, but here it'll come and it'll pop in there switch switch done and that is that it is done and um, just for one last little thing here before it gets I have to set the time and the when I hit the clear button I just want to put this one last thing out um, that comes from here that goes on down it clears the D flip flops clears everything and it sends a line down on here 
This is kind of important, um, and it sets this RS NOR latch, which then sends the interrupt command, and it keeps the signal from going. So that'll clear all of them at the same time. Um, the reason this is important is because um, if you don't do it at the same time, um, the interrupt, and you don't maintain that interrupt until it's ready, well, you know, basically when it's ready, send that it turns the RS NOR latch off again. Um, what will happen is um, some of them will turn off, and then um, it'll wait on your tens multiplier and then that'll finally turn off because it has to go through all this logic to, to, to clear all this logic um, and so naturally it would take longer for it to clear than the ones and so you use this little function here to just flip it all off and let it figure it out itself and when it's you know whenever that's taken care of it doesn't really matter because it'll be off until you're ready to use it again and uh, that's pretty much it though just uh, our little project right here um, took some time to make quite a bit of time to make and uh, design and i hope you guys like it let me know if you have any comments thanks